Hi, everybody. Hey, today is Peter Rabbit. And this is a little book when it was first published over a hundred years ago. Um, this, I got this from the library, but it was just a little tiny book with little illustrations. So uh, we're going to have a bigger copy right here when we actually get to the story. But I started thinking about Peter Rabbit and I have a puppet that looks a little bit like Peter Rabbit. And I'm wondering if you guys know the Peter Rabbit song. It kind of goes like this. Little Peter Rabbit had a fly upon his nose. Little Peter Rabbit had a fly upon his nose. Little Peter Rabbit had a fly upon his nose and he flipped it and he flopped it and it flew away. So you can sing that with me. We're gonna try a whole bunch of different things that Peter Rabbit had on his nose. <laughs> and if you know the hand uh, motions to Little Peter Rabbit, this would be Little Peter Rabbit had a fly upon his nose. <laughs> That's um, what you could do singing along with me. So let's see what kind of little bugs Peter Rabbit gets on his nose. So we do the fly first. I got a fly. We're going to put it on Peter Rabbit's nose. And can you sing with me? <laughs> little Peter Rabbit had a fly upon his nose. Little Peter Rabbit had a fly upon his nose. Little Peter Rabbit had a fly upon his nose. And he flipped it and he flopped it and it flew away. Well, let's see, what else can we put on Peter's nose? How about, how about a frog? <laughs> Let's sing it with Peter Rabbit and a frog on his nose. Here we go. Little Peter Rabbit had a frog on his nose. Little Peter Rabbit had a frog on his nose. Little Peter Rabbit had a frog on his nose. And he flipped it and he flopped it and it <laughs> jumped away. I don't think frogs fly. And it jumped away. Ha. Okay, let's see. Ooh, how about... A green caterpillar. Let's do that. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Little Peter Rabbit had, uh-oh, a caterpillar on his nose. Little Peter Rabbit had a caterpillar on his nose. Little Peter Rabbit had a caterpillar on his nose. And he flipped it and he flopped it and it crawled away. <laughs> now it's getting a little tricky to sing. How about blue butterfly? Let's try that. Oh, there it is, a blue butterfly. <laughs> Little Peter Rabbit had a blue butterfly on his nose. Little Peter Rabbit had a blue butterfly on his nose. Little Peter Rabbit had a blue butterfly on his nose and he flipped it and he flopped it and it, it flew away. Woo! His poor nose. <laughs> Oh, how about a big bumblebee? Look at that. What if he had a big <laughs> bumblebee on his nose? Hold still, Peter. <laughs> Hold still, Peter. It's a big bumblebee. <laughs> Little Peter Rabbit had a bumblebee on his nose. Little Peter Rabbit had a big bumblebee on his nose. Little Peter Rabbit had a big bumblebee on his nose and he flipped it and he flapped it and it flew away. Oh my goodness. Okay, last one. A beetle bug. <laughs> there we go. Can you see it? A beetle bug on his nose. There it is. Peter, the last one. Oh no. <laughs> Little Peter Rabbit had a big <laughs> beetle bug on his nose. Little Peter Rabbit had a beetle bug on his nose. Little Peter Rabbit had a beetle bug on his nose and he flipped it and he flopped it and it crawled away. <sighs> okay, well that's a pretty fun song. And if you have a puppet, you can kind of sing along with it too, or play along. It's a really easy song to remember. And we are gonna tell the story. So I'm gonna change the camera to the tabletop so you can see the pictures right now. There we go. Okay, the tale of Peter Rabbit. There he is, and it's by Beatrix Potter. And she was a 
lady that lived in England over a hundred years ago. And she wrote this when she was a young girl. It was actually a letter to a friend of hers who was sick. And she told the story in her letter and drew pictures of rabbits in the letter that she wrote. So the tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Here we go. There's Peter Rabbit in a garden. I'm gonna adjust the pictures just a little bit so you can see them better. There we go. There's a watering can. Oh, a snail. We didn't do little Peter Rabbit has a snail upon his nose, did we? But we could have. And there's a bird in the garden. Oh, there we go. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, <laughs> Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. See that tree? Wow. Big, tall tree. Had big roots coming out the sides. All right, and there's Peter's little cottontail. Okay. Now, my dear, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go to the field or down the lane, but don't go to Mr. McGregor's garden. Oh, there she's talking to her little rabbit kids. Flopsy, mopsy, cottontail. There's Peter. He looks like he's thinking something else. Don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there and he was put into a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Oh no, rabbit pie. I've never eaten rabbit pie and I'm really glad I haven't. Oh no, that's quite an accident. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. So there she is, buttoning up Peter's jacket and all the flopsy mopsy and cottontail. They're already headed out to do what they're gonna do. Turn the page. Okay. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Ooh, there's her basket. There's her umbrella. She's walking through the woods. Nice. There we go. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. Oh, I can see the blackberries on the bushes. Yeah, I can see the blackberries on the bushes. And they've already got some blackberries in their basket. Whoa, they were really working hard. They even took off their coats. And there's a blackbird. Oh, and a bird is trying to get some of the blackberries out of their basket. They were gathering a lot of them. Whoa, working hard. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away. Guess where he went? He ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden. Oh no, that's just where his mom told him not to go. Ah. He went to Mr. McGregor's garden and he squeezed under the gate. Rabbits are really good at squeezing through tiny places. That's what I think. Whoa. First, he ate some lettuce. And then he ate some French beans. And then he ate some radishes. Whoa, that's a lot of vegetables. There's the beans. Whoa, and there's... <laughs> There's the radishes. They were long and skinny radishes. Well, and then after all those vegetables, and then feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. Of course, I think parsley fixes everything, right? There we go. But around the end of a cucumber frame, who should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Wow, <laughs> there's Mr. McGregor. <laughs> oh no! Let's see what's going. Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and he ran after Peter with a rake. 
waving it in the air and calling out, stop thief. Oh, there, can you see the rake? He's got a rake, he's running after the rabbit. He's running after Peter and Peter is running as fast as he can away from Mr. McGregor. <laughs> Peter was most dreadfully frightened and he rushed all over the garden for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. Couldn't remember how to get out. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages. Can you see his shoe right there? Oh, <laughs> the little bird found it. He lost one of his shoes <laughs> among the cabbages. And the other shoe among the potatoes. Oh, big potatoes, little shoe. The bird found it too. His shoes are gone. And after losing his shoes, he ran on, on four legs, and he went much faster. So I think he might have gotten away altogether if he hadn't, unfortunately, run into a gooseberry net. Oh, can you see the net? Oh, he ran into the gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. Oh, let's look for the large button. There it is, right there right there on his jacket and it got caught in the net. Oh no, it was a blue jacket with big brass buttons and it was quite new. Uh-oh, that's trouble. Oh, he wiggled and squirmed, but he gave himself up for loss and shed big tears. He couldn't get away, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. He said, hey, wiggle, wiggle, get away, get away. Come on, there they are. But Peter, he was still caught. He was wiggling and squirming and he thought he all was lost. Oh no. And Mr. McGregor came up with a big sieve, which he intended to pop on top of Peter, but Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind. There's a big sieve. Sieves are used for, for um, sifting things like maybe getting some rocks out of soil. And he was gonna pop, Mr. McGregor was gonna pop that right on top of Peter, but Peter wiggled away just in time. Dun, da, da, da. Wow. And Peter rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can, a watering can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Oh no, water in the watering can. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in that tool shed, perhaps in, hidden underneath a flower, flower pot. Let's see, there he is looking at the flower pots. He began to turn each flower pot over carefully looking underneath each one. And presently, Peter sneezed. <laughs> and Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. Oh my goodness. All of those pots running after him again. And Mr. McGregor tried to put his foot on Peter, tried to step on him. Oh no. There's Mr. McGregor's foot. He tried to step on Peter, but Peter jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. And luckily the window was too small for Mr. McGregor and he was tired of running after Peter anyway. He went back to his work. Well, there's Mr. McGregor's foot. Peter jumping out the window. There's the plants flying. Oh my goodness. But luckily Mr. McGregor got tired and just went back to work. There we go, there we go. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that watering can. He looks a little sad there, don't you think? Yeah, uh-oh, there he goes. After a time, he began to wander about going lippity, lippity lip, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little bunny 
to squeeze underneath. You know, they're good at squeezing underneath things, but not a door, not a locked door on the wall. Oh, there he is. I see somebody else. Look at that. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she couldn't answer. She only shook her head at him, and Peter began to cry. Can you see Peter's tears right there? Oh no, he was crying. He just couldn't find his way out of that garden, which was dangerous. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he came, became more and more lost and puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. Oh, look at that pond. Hmm. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. <laughs> she was very, very still. But now and then the tip of that cat's tail twitched as if it were alive. And Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. What do you think a cat might do to a rabbit? Might try to chase it, maybe even try to eat it. Well, there's Peter watching the cat and the cat watching the goldfish. Peter decided, no, best not to disturb the cat. So Peter, he went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. There he is, he's trying to hide. He knew oh, what was on the other end of that hoe. It was, of course. Mr. McGregor. Well, he was hiding under the bushes, but presently nothing happened. So Peter came out and climbed up on a wheelbarrow and peeked over the edge. The first thing he saw, oh yes, was Mr. McGregor. <laughs> he was hoeing onions and his back was turned towards Peter and beyond Mr. McGregor, look, was the gate. That's where Peter wanted to go. Beyond Mr. McGregor was the gate. So what's he gonna do? He wants to get out so bad. Oh, Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he was running straight along the wall behind some black currant bushes. But Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner. And Peter didn't care. He, he, he slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the woods outside the garden. Boy, he got away from Mr. McGregor. Mr. McGregor hung up the little blue jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to fight to frighten the blackbirds. Oh, there's Peter's jacket with those buttons and his shoes hanging down. Did the blackbirds look scared? Well, he got away, he got out to the woods. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him until he got home to the big fir tree. There he is, there's his whole, there's his brothers and sisters back there looking. Where did Peter go? They're looking at him, they're wondering. He was so tired that he flopped down on the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and he shut his eyes. Oh, there he is. <laughs> He shut his eyes and his mother was busy cooking and she wondered what he had done with his clothes. What happened to his blue jacket? Hmm. It was the second little blue jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. Oh my goodness. This is mother looking at him wondering what happened. What's a fortnight? Oh, well, what's a fortnight? Um, they, that's a kind of an old timey expression and it means two weeks. I'll read the sentence again and I'll substitute two weeks for fortnight. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Pe Peter had lost in two weeks. 
or a fortnight. <laughs> That's a funny word. I like that word. I am <laughs> I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea. There she is making the tea. And she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. There's Peter in bed. There's his mom rabbit making tea. There's his bunny brothers and sisters. Oh, there he is in bed. And there she is trying to give him some tea. Popsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail. There we go. Oh, but Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. Look at that. They were so lucky. They didn't have to go to bed and drink chamomile tea. They had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. <laughs> the end. Did you like that story? I hope so. Well, I'm glad Peter got safely back home. Yeah. It's an old story. It was written about over 100 years ago. All right, so let's make a Peter Rabbit craft. There we go. <laughs> well, um, today we're going to do a craft making a jumping, a jumping rabbit. And so to do that, um, in the craft supply list, I said bring in a couple of cups. Now, paper cups are easier to work with, but I only had these. And I've got one over here that's a paper cup that I am going to, we're gonna turn these into a bunny. And the bunny is gonna jump. I put a rubber band on here and that's what we're gonna do. And when, when we do that and turn this cup into a bunny, it'll actually jump because we're gonna make it bounce off of the rubber bands. We're also going to need some construction paper. I got some pink for the nose and some of the ears, and I got some blue for to match. Maybe he's going to be a blue bunny with, with pink ears, I think. I got some cotton balls, and I've got a um, couple of different kinds of rubber bands, but you're probably only going to need one or two. And I got some Google eyes, too. Um, but if you don't have those, we can always draw eyes. We can always draw a face. So let's get started. And um, so the first thing to do is to make your cup look like a bunny. And my cup doesn't really look like a bunny very, very much. So I'm gonna cover it. And I have, oh, I have some glue. I have a glue stick. I have a little bit of regular white glue. And I have some tape just for, just to help me out here a little bit. So I'm gonna to try to make my cup look like a bunny. And I got a piece of blue that I'm gonna wrap around. Oh, that doesn't fit. I have another piece of blue. I'm gonna wrap that around my cup so it'll look more like a, a blue jacket on a bunny, don't you think? So, whoops. Let's see, I am going to wrap my piece of blue paper around the cup. I had it right the first time. And glue it on the back or tape it. Whoa, there we go. I'm gonna tape it right there. So now my cup looks like maybe, it will be a better looking bunny than I had before. There we go. And I'm going to tape it. Oh, I'm having trouble today with my cup. There we go. Almost. That's way better. Okay. There. So now I've got it taped down. And what can I do to make it look like a bunny? Well, I think we should put some eyes on it, don't you? Maybe some eyes and a face. And so I'm gonna take my marker and I am going to 
make a face on it like this. That's a, and a few dots, two, two J, a forward J and a backwards J touching each other. And some whisker dots. There we go. But it needs it needs a pink nose, don't you think? I think so. It needs a pink nose. Yeah, it needs a pink nose. So I'm gonna take my, and I have lots of scrap paper, so I'm gonna cut off a little chunk. And I am gonna cut a triangle for a pink nose. And I hope I get the right size. Let's see. So here's my triangle. Let's see. You need to put ears. Yeah, we're gonna do ears next. That's what we're gonna do next. We are definitely, okay, so there's my nose. After I get the face, I think we should put ears on them, don't you? So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue stick on my pink triangle, stick it on there. I'm gonna put eyes on it last. You can draw eyes on it if you have, if you have a marker or if you have actually Google eyes you can stick those on, but I put them on last because they, it takes a little while for them to stay. And, and I knock them off when I'm doing some of the other things to my cup. All right, so are you ready to make some ears? I am. So I'm gonna take another piece of my blue paper and let's see, tall, nice tall ears. So I'm gonna pull my paper in half and I'm going to cut some long ears. I can cut them at the same time if I have two pieces of paper. Like it's folded in half. And so then I can just cut a long ear shape like so. So I cut a long, now I have two exactly the same. <laughs> Those are going to fit right on top of my bunny. Just like that. So ears, little rabbit ears are kind of pink inside. So that's why I have some pink paper and I'm gonna make a smaller shape that will fit inside my bigger shape. Like that. So I folded my piece of paper in half and I'm gonna do a smaller thing like I did before by making it skinnier and shorter the insides of my bunny ears, like that. So of course, I'm gonna do some glue stick. So when I put them together, I'll be like that. But I'm gonna leave a little bit here at the bottom so I can fold it and then stick it on top of my cup so it'll stay. All right, so Where's my glue stick? I just had it. Here it is. Put a little bit of glue on my pink ear and stick it on my folded blue ear. There we go. So I'm going to hold that up to the camera so you can see I folded the bottom, I put on the pink, and in a minute I'm going to stick it on top <laughs> of my cup. All right, so I'm going to do that again with my other ear for the rabbit. And I'm going to fold the end of my ear right there, folded, and stick that. Oh, pink middle in the middle. There we go. Okay, so now. I'm gonna put some glue on the folded edge and stick it to the top of my cup. How are you guys doing? There. Oops. You know, I, I have some tape nearby and my cup has a little bit of wax on it because of course it was made to drink things out of and not get soggy. And so my glue stick is not staying is not gluing my bunny ear very well. So I'm gonna put some tape on it to see if that helps. So if you have any tape, you know, you can just kind of play around and see if you can get it to stick better than mine did. All right, so there's my two bunny ears. And I did use tape to stick them down. Okay, 
All right, so how are we going to get this bunny? It needs eyes. Oh, and you know what? If you, this would be a good time in case you wanted to, to kind of draw some buttons on Peter's coat. That'd be cool. But this is how we're going to make this bunny jump. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to do it <laughs> with, it's going to be like this. Boing, boing, boing. It's going to have a rubber band across it. So on your cup, if you have a paper cup, you can do this. You can take and poke your scissors into the edge of the paper cup. See how I made a hole there? My paper cup with the scissors went right through. And then right on the other side, I poked right directly across. I poked through again, right there. A little poke. There's the hole. It finally came through just a little hole. There's the hole. Now I need a rubber band. And I'm going to take my rubber band and I'm going to cut it just in one spot. So now I have a rubber band that's not a circle anymore. It's a long string. And this might, you might be able to do this really pretty good. Um, little fingers. I'm sticking the rubber band through the hole. <laughs> and it's defying me just a minute. I'm going to try to get that rubber band through the hole. I might have to make my hole just a tad. You don't want it too big because then when we put a knot in it, it'll still come out. Okay, so there we go. I got it. I got it through the hole. I'm stretching it across the cup to the other hole that was right exactly across from it. Oh my goodness. There, I got it. Pull, pull, pull. Now I've got these two floppy ends on the side. And so that's where we're going to tie a knot. See this right here? We're going to tie a knot in the edge of that rubber band so the rubber band won't pull through the hole. So I'm tying a knot right there. Whoa. See how I have a knot right there? And then I'm going to pull so it won't pull through the cup. And then I'm going to pull it over here and then tie a knot as close as I can to the hole on this side around my finger and looping it and tuck it. Oops, it didn't work. Just a minute. Around my finger, looping it through and making a knot. Now, if you need an adult help with a knot, that's okay, you can ask. Okay, so there it is, it's stretched across. So now, <laughs> on your other paper cup, you can stick it on and it'll jump. But our bunny needs some eyes, don't you think? So now that I've got, I've been, oh, you know what we forgot? The tail, bunny tail. <laughs> So I'm going to get out my white glue because that will stick the cotton better. So I'm going to put a bunny tail on the back of my cup with some glue and some cotton balls. And stick a little cotton tail on the back of Peter Rabbit. There's the back. There's any need some eyes. So this is the point where I'm either going to draw eyes or put my Google eyes on it. And since I have Google eyes, I'm going to put a bunch of glue on either side. Glue. And now a Google eye over the glue. <laughs> and the other Google eye over here. Now I'm going to have to wait till those dry. And there is the bunny. <laughs> Pretty cool. And the thing that's really neat about this bunny is it will hop. And I'm going to let his Google eyes dry. Uh-oh. Before I make him hop. Because he'll lose his eyes. So I'm going to put him down. But I'm going to illustrate again. So if you made a rabbit out of a cup and you have it stretched, the rubber band across, you can put it on your other cup, just like this and push it down, boom!
<laughs> and your rabbit bounces. So it's a bouncy rabbit. We go again. Bing! There we go. So this would be the rabbit. This would be Peter the rabbit bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. But if I bounce him too high, his Google eyes will fall off. Boing! <laughs> uh oh. See? Oh no, I did. I knocked his eye off. All right. Well, there we go. So you can work with that a little bit. Maybe draw Peter's blue jacket. But there's your bouncing rabbit with a cotton tail and <laughs> big floppy ears. No fly upon his nose, though. <laughs> you could, hey, you could draw one. All right. So that is our craft for today. And we really hope you had fun listening to Peter Rabbit, the tale of Peter Rabbit. So we'll see you again next time. ever seen before. And here's where you get to make a choice. Was it ah, a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex? And I'm just gonna stick some pine cones in my box and um, then the fun starts. I just start rolling them around. The air rushing out of the balloon is going to push that balloon up. So let's see what happens. All right, one, two, three. Oh, wow. So that's how rockets kind of work. We are going to build two different kinds of rockets today. Set it down and wait. Woo! All right.